All right, guys, today I want to do a video talking about budget knives. And this is something that not only do I get this question a lot, but I see this question posed almost every day in the knife forums, the knife YouTubes, the knife everywhere. And that is budget knives, cheap knives. What's the best one? Where can I buy it? How can I buy it? And all of those kind of questions kind of homologated into one. And so today I wanted to do a video talking about budget knives and why I think you should honestly avoid them, stay away from them, and just go straight for, I don't wanna say like top end, you know, like high end knives, like say a Chris Reeve knives and Kosi, or uh, you know, a Shiro, or something along those lines, or even like a full custom, but Honestly, I see so many people, you know, just trying to chase the perfect or the best budget knife. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of solid knives. And I think the technology, the steel, the quality control, and especially the country of origin has been able to dictate bringing quality knives down to lower costs for quite some time now. And honestly, if I did have to recommend one quality you know budget knife it probably would be this guy right here the kershaw emerson cqc6 in d2 of course uh just because i think that this guy like you can get it pretty regularly for under 50 dollars and sometimes under 40 dollars and for overall, I'd say this is probably the best choice, but the biggest reason why I say don't buy this knife and don't buy any budget folder is that because if you decide to hold off and spend just a little bit more money, I think that the end payoff is really there. So, you know, we already established that, let's say this guy is about 45 to $40, uh, your budget knife. Stepping up to $120, you get something like this Hogue Deca in Magna Cut and it's much lighter, much more pocket friendly. The action is way better. Of course, it's made in America, which is important for some people. Others don't really care, but most importantly, the steel itself is a huge upgrade. The action is a huge upgrade. And once again, it's super, super lightweight. This comes in at like two and a half ounces. This thing is around five and a half to six ounces. And that's partly due to this full steel um, kind of handle slab if you will because this is a frame lock so all of this side is steel and then you have g10 with a nice thick steel liner underneath of it so this guy is hefty but at the same time too you know that's kind of what you're getting and not to mention too you know when you look at this knife um, not to say that like honestly in my opinion this is one of the better looking budget blades out there but it does look like a budget blade even the g10 itself now, even just that, stepping up, you know, a little bit more expensive than something like the DECA, you can get something like a Para 3 from Spyderco. And once again, you're gonna be seeing really solid blade steel. Honestly, I'd probably, re probably recommend the S45 VN version of the blade, because that's coming in about at the same cost as the S30V. But then you get, you know, two really good slabs at G10. And once again, a blade that is just super smooth in action, super nice, super usable and realistically i think a blade that you're going to be content with for a lot longer and i think that that's kind of the trap to these cheaper knives these cheaper knives are kind of like the gateway drug to collecting more knives because you're going to buy one of these and it's not going to satisfy you for long like you're going to get this you're going to like it in hand for a little while you know maybe a couple weeks maybe a couple months and then you're going to be like all right i've had my fun with that what can i go for next and that's when you end up going for things like your 100 200 300 dollar blades that are going Going to hold you over for a lot longer and that's why I think for me and in my opinion when I usually recommend blades I say like go for something that's you know hundred to three hundred dollars because when you are in that price range of like good mid-range knives like once again the para 3 paramilitary 2 uh, the Hodeca these blades are going to hold you off a lot longer because they're going to come in with better build quality better materials and they're going to be a lot
lot more friendly for you to actually use every day. This blade here, you know, this uh, paramilitary two, is going to be something that you're going to want to carry a lot. And honestly, a lot of people kind of end there. Like that is their blade that they EDC. Whereas if you get something like this CQC6, you know, you're gonna like it, you're gonna use it, but then the blade is gonna start to rust. You're gonna start to, you know, realize that carrying a near six ounce blade kind of sucks. So you're gonna start gravitating towards something like this PM2 anyways. So for me, oftentimes I just say, just cut the chase and go straight for those kind of mid-tier blades. And I think the mid-tier is really where it's at for most people. Of course, can you step up to something like a, a you know, a Chris Reeve Knives Large and Cozy? Sure, you know, this is a blade that you could step up to. And if you have, you know, $600 to drop on a knife, this is not a bad option. But at the same time too, I think that most people are gonna be satisfied with a solid mid-tier and like I said, this just helps you avoid the hassle and honestly the expenditure of buying, you know, lots of these budget blades, buying, you know, Civivi Elementums, you know, buying a Kaiser Drop Bear, buying even, like I said, the CQC6 and, you know, really kind of playing with those more budget options and just going straight for the kill, going for something that is honestly going to satisfy and meet your needs for a longer period of time. I mean, I know people who have carried uh, paramilitary twos, para threes for years and have been perfectly contented with those knives and those choices. So I think that the end satisfaction is going to be far higher with these mid-tier blades than just buying, you know, just jumping the gun and trying to buy a cheaper knife. Now, like I said, if you need something for your pocket immediately, in my opinion, I still think that the CQC6 is probably one of the better options out there. It's pretty well squared away. And most of all, it's a knife that you can really put a beating on and it's going to take it just fine. The only thing that I really think, that, the only big miss that I have with this blade is just that it's very freaking heavy and it's most noticeable when you actually put it up against knives that are even bigger than it and it still feels so much heavier than something like this paramilitary too. Anyways guys, that's kind of my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I really think it is just worth going straight for the kill, going for the more expensive blades because they will satisfy you a lot longer. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless. And I